Okay, so I'm wondering if you can describe what is the COVID-19 coronavirus antibody test and why is it significant in possibly stopping the spread of the coronavirus? Sure. So first of all, um, antibodies are proteins that bodies, white blood cells uh, produce to fight an infection. And these proteins bind to the virus and they prevent it from infecting cells. And they remain in the blood long after infection clears. So antibody tests are commonly used to test for exposure to the virus. Um, antibody test looks to see if someone has had the infection and hopefully has recovered from it. Um, it's different from the common tests that are available out there right now, which is looking for the presence of the antigen or the virus itself. So the current test um, is to ans answer the question, is this person currently infected with the virus? Um, the antibody test answers a different question. Was this person exposed to the virus and hopefully have they recovered? and have their immune system has developed antibodies that demonstrates they have cleared the infection. And how could that be of help in terms of uh, helping people who might have currently the coronavirus? How could it be helpful to know who has already had it and be, become immune to it? Right. So. Um, so it, the antibody tests answers different kinds of questions which are really important for um, dealing with this pandemic. So if we can um, find out if somebody has already been infected and recovered from it, that is super helpful to know whether some of the prevention uh, measures that we have utilized have actually worked. So that's one. Second, it gives you a sense of um, the magnitude of the uh, epidemic in a particular setting, in a particular city, in a particular state, or in an entire country. Um, because remember that a lot of these infections are asymptomatic. So many of these people got the infection, their immune system responded, developed antibody, they recovered from it, but they never even knew they got the infection. They were never tested for it. Uh, so there's, they don't know and the society doesn't know. But if we do the antibody test and we identify those individuals, then we can uh, know much better how widespread was this uh, infection. Um, so it, it gives us a much more sort of a richer picture of the scope of this epidemic. So the antibody testing, how widespread is it? Is it available in the U.S.? Is it available in these countries that are particularly hit by the coronavirus? Um, it is not widely available to my knowledge. Um, a lot of the academic institutions, the hospitals are developing the antibody test and they can actually develop it pretty quickly, but uh, not at the scale uh, that's needed for general public. So once these academic institutions develop the antibody test, then it needs to go through kind of a large scale clinical trials. And that's going to require a lot of resources and all kinds of logistical challenges and, uh, you know, getting uh, FDA approval and licensed and all of that. So uh, again, academic institutions are developing these antibody tests and are using it uh, to, to screen it's not widely available. Um, I've been reading about some of the countries that are beginning to use this on a wide scale um, in their general population. Uh, Iceland uh, is one of the countries that uh, has been mentioned. Germany has been mentioned. And UK, I think, is planning to do a lot of these antibody tests. Um, to my knowledge, Iceland may be the only country that is doing it, these antibody tests in their general population. And by that, I mean people who may have no symptoms whatsoever, they've never been tested for the infection, they're simply trying to come up with a representative sample in Iceland and answer the question, what percentage of our population has been exposed to this virus and hopefully has recovered from it? So that would be um, in answering that 
question is fundamental because then they know, all right, looks like the infection rate is way below 1%, for example, or is it 5% or is it 10%? So doing it um, kind of nationwide, of course, that's a huge undertaking. In some communities in the United States, I saw there was a report in Colorado that was a small community that they were going to basically voluntarily provide antibody testing to every member of that community to just get a sense how effective has been our community or is our community, just to get a sense of um, how aggressive our prevention measures need to be. And now I'm wondering your thoughts, U.S. President Donald Trump predicted yesterday that the death rate will peak in the U.S. from the coronavirus in two weeks. Is that uh, something that, you know, epidemiologists, uh, scientists can actually estimate the peak of the, the death toll? Um, epidemiologists are doing and those who are doing mathematical modeling are doing exactly those kinds of um, calculations. Uh, the peak uh, is probably not going to be in two weeks. It's going to be longer than that, maybe another month or two. Um, so United States is very much still on sort of uh, upscale of this epidemic. Few places, I believe Seattle, which is where the first case of uh, coronavirus infection was isolated, is beginning to see a plateauing of nothing, which, is, which is wonderful news. And now Dr. Fauci, uh, you know, one of the top uh, scientists in the United States, said yesterday that up to 200,000 Americans could die because of this coronavirus epidemic in the U.S., is, does that seem like an outrageous number to you? Does that seem like, uh, you know, a, a number we should expect, 200,000 Americans dying because of this? Of course, it's an extremely sobering number. Um, but I must say, I do have a great deal of faith in uh, Dr. Fauci. Uh, as you said, he is one of the top scientists, infectious disease scientists, who've been working on multiple epidemics all the way back from HIV AIDS epidemic in early 1980 till now with Zika, uh, with H1N1, et cetera. And he is surrounded by a group of uh, experts um, uh, in epidemiology and clinical medicine, et cetera. So when he speaks, he speaks with uh, a very much science-based. Um, that 200,000 number, um, as hard it is to accept that that could be becoming the reality in a few months, Unfortunately, it's a number that I have seen um, before. And in fact, and I believe Dr. Fauci referred to this, that 200,000 um, Americans dying from this disease is um, when we do um, adequate prevention measures. So the number can actually be quite a bit higher than that. If our prevention measures are not aggressive enough, not appropriate enough, that 200,000 number can actually go up. Now, I'm wondering if you could speak at all to the state of the coronavirus outbreak in Iran. Um, right now, it's reported that the deaths are 2,757, uh, with about 400,000, uh, 40,000 infections. Um, I'm wondering, what do you make of those numbers? This is what the government is reporting. Uh, do you, can we trust those numbers? What do you think is the scale of the outbreak? Uh, I have been monitoring those numbers as well. The numbers don't seem very consistent to me. It's not a clear explanation of how the numbers are going up or what the death rate, how to explain the death rate. Um, it is quite a bit lower than um, places like in Italy, where the, the death rate is uh, around 10%. Uh, I hope those numbers are correct, but frankly, it's not well explained. Um, there are some Iranian uh, scientists around the world, in Canada and in Australia, and they're beginning to do some mathematical modeling based on data coming from Iran, uh, and they're trying to do their best to come up with uh, more accurate estimates. So I'm, I'm eager to see what those numbers will look like. 
And obviously, Italy, Iran, um, you know, China, these are countries that are very much hit with the coronavirus. Um, just in terms of Iran, I'm wondering, uh, how did it get so out of control? Uh, what are the explanations that epidemiologists, scientists are, um, you know, trying to explain why it has such, you know, a high infection rate? The story, as I understand it, is because of the U.S. sanctions, Iran had very deep uh, commercial relationship with China, uh, including with Wuhan, the very epicenter uh, of this pandemic. So there were flights going back and forth. There were uh, merchants, business people going back and forth. And when the epidemic was announced in China, um, Iran chose not to um, uh, stop travel, basically, to and from China. Uh, flights continued to go for a while. Uh, flights continued to come from China, including from the city of Qom, which became sort of like the epicenter in Iran. So um, there was that aspect to it. And also there wasn't really an honest um, acknowledgement that this outbreak has already begun in Iran. Speedy attempts to uh, isolate the cases, identify the cases, do contact tracing, do social distancing, etc. Those measures were not really put in place for weeks, even actually months after the cases um, came up. And as we are learning more and more about this disease, it's so contagious that days, the delay of days can result in many, many more cases. So you can't afford to um, delay by weeks. And by the way, even the United States is, uh, is, is really uh, going through that right now. There are uh, quite a few public health experts that um, are um, criticizing government for not responding quickly and not responding sort of with the full scale of its resources. Uh, in the last few weeks, the United States has been responding much more, I would say, appropriately. Um, we still have a lot of work to do, but as you know, testing was not available. And I think it was just the messaging was kind of mixed and a bit confusing. And this is a time that messaging from the government needs to be standardized, science-based, coordinated, well-articulated. You can have different members of the government uh, say different things about this this disease because then then the public gets confused. 